Hello, everyone. This is a very, very wonderful time because I get to really share ideas with people I've worked with forever. Barbara Barbatelli. Hi, Barbara. Ciao. Ciao. Hello, everybody. She, it's lucky she speaks English, is joining us from Rome, Italy. When I was living in Italy from 1992 to 2007, Barbara was my assistant and, and she's her own researcher. She's an amazing researcher for Kuhn, but because that's the Centro Ufologico Nazionale and because she was interested in the American um, scene and the American researchers, <clears throat> Barbara would be by my side when we did a tremendous amount of research. Behind Barbara, you see uh, a painting of a, of a, uh, uh, um, a kind of tra uh, rendition of the Charles Hall case, mm -hmm. the tall whites, uh, because Barbara studied that with me. I was doing that when I was in Italy. And, uh, you know, with uh, the story, she read it, and then you see this particular image all the time on internet. But people don't know that it was Barbara that painted it. So she needs to be given credit. Plus, what she does, um, and it's her real passion, is she plays the violin. And she plays, and, and do you play the fiddle too, or just the violin? No, I play. Strings, let's say strings. Strings. So, and, and your favorite music, and you people, you and your sister, Aurora, who plays the harp, do Irish music. Yes, yes. We love Irish music. It started in 1976. Okay. All right. Uh, can you, can, Desta, can we stop for a minute? She's got too much light on her face. She, uh, her, too much light. Okay. So Barbara, uh, what, what got you interested in ufology? Let's start at the beginning. When I was a child here in Rome, I saw a strange red light here, just in front of my house, and nobody could explain it. And I, I was really scared from it. After I read a lot of science fiction, after I went in contact with uh, uh, space archaeoastronauts, you know, all the, those books. Uh, and in the end, I um, entered the CUN, CUN, that is the Centro Ufologico Nazionale, the most important uh, ufological research center here in Italy. There, I have many friends. Uh, sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't agree. But uh, the situation uh, helped me to study a lot of, of cases uh, to talk with witnesses. And then I had the, the pleasure and the luckiness to meet you because you <laughs> still work with them many years ago. And so uh, we got in contact and you, uh, with your research all over Italy, and not only Italy, also abroad, Switzerland and other countries, uh, permitted me to know very important cases, ufological cases, testimonies and uh, researchers as well, like John Mack, like uh, Linda Morton Howe, witnesses like Travis Walton, um, contact. Did you, meet, did you meet Jesse Marcel Jr. too? Jesse Marcel Jr. too, yes, yes, a lot of them. And uh, Billy Meyer in, uh, in Switzerland, we went to... <laughs> let's, let's start with Billy Meyer, because <laughs> I, why I asked Barbara to do this is because uh, I want her to talk about her expertise on the Amicizia case, which is the Pescara case, and you're the only real expert I want to talk to that speaks English, but uh, we, what, it, describe our trip to Billy Meyer. We did that by car. Yes, by car from uh, Milan. And it was incredible because he lives in a, an enchanted place. 
like, um, you know, um, in fiction, our wooden um, forest, uh, uh, the country, and... This is Smit Rudy, Smit Rudy, which is the German side of, of Switzerland. So you remember that beautiful trip. Do you remember that on the way in Milano, we stopped at a crop circle in Rome? Yes, uh, it was a sign of destiny. <laughs> that <laughs> fantastic, really. I'd like to do something like that more in future, I don't know, with you again. Yeah, because that was a field trip. So when we got to Smit Rudy, we couldn't find, remember? We couldn't find where he lived. Yeah, because Switzerland, like, I discovered uh, Wendell Stevens, when he described He's going to Shmidruti, just the same situation. Very little labels on streets, very narrow streets, all mountains all around, and he got lost. Just like we did. Like we did. <laughs> <laughs> just like we did. And then we ended up in the parking lot at Samyazi Star Center, remember? Beautiful, beautiful. A poetical place and there was really a strange atmosphere. I don't know if it was because he really is in contact with uh, aliens or because um, there is a strange energy, but it was a magical place. This is what I can say. And, and, and we saw, um, we sat down with Figo, with Gunther, and he talked to us for a long time. And you remember Billy was watching us? Yeah, he passed and looked at us, uh, I, but he's very protected from figure people. So it is difficult to understand what's really going on in that place. I don't really know, really. Uh, for me, it remained a, a mystery. Uh, the, Do you remember when we were asked to leave because of the peace meditation and we went down in the garden? And do you yeah. remember? Do you remember when Billy came to the gate and stared at us? Yes, and after uh, Miss Kruger arrived, we and, Miss Kruger arrived, um, and uh, said that uh, angels were looking over us. Do you remember it? I don't Miss remember the angels part. I remember that Guido Miss Kruger. I don't know if he said just angels. But he said that somebody was looking on a, over us, and he, of course, well, he had eyes. He had, he had eyes. blue eyes. He had beautiful blue eyes. Yeah, I remember that. He wrote the book and still they fly, which I have uh, done a book review on Patreon for the people that are listening. And then uh, I, he told me that Billy sent him down to me because he spoke English. Yeah. I understand. I, I understand. Yes. So we had our picture taken with him. Do you remember? Yeah. I don't have it now. So well, I have, have the pic Yeah, I have the picture. But um, what do you remember about Guido Musbruger other than his eyes? Yeah, he had something uh, angelic. I don't know. He looked a little like a, a prophet. Uh, a prophet. Yeah. yeah. But you remember, you remember Billy looking over the gate at us while we were saying the peace prayer. Do you remember that? Yes, yes. It's been an incredible experience. Uh, I still uh, would like to understand well what's happening there, but uh, most of their publications are in Deutsch, so it, it is a and, little and German in German. German, sorry, German. Uh, uh, the thing with him, so tell me what, tell me two things that you believe about the case to be real. The case, Billy Mayer, do you say, Billy Mayer? I believe uh, in what Wendell Stevens uh, talks about his experience with Billy Mayer. Uh, because uh, Wendell Stevens describes su such strange situations happened to him while he was in contact with Billy Mayer, I had to conclude that really Billy was in contact with something external, somebody mm, technologically most advanced. Um, 
And it's the same thing, I think, about the Amicizia case. There are some particulars, some links, some uh, testimonies uh, from witnesses that make me think that really somebody, I don't know if they are aliens, but I think there is somebody technologically incredibly advanced living among us and um, in a certain way hiding from us. This is a, a big problem for our researchers because I have the feeling, I'm not sure of it, but I have the feeling that they first, John won. we to discover too much about them. They don't want us to discover much. They're doing the cover-up. Mm, 